It has now been almost four months since Hurricane Maria devastated the island of Puerto Rico, leaving millions without electricity and clean drinking water. Since then, the crisis has all but completely dropped out of the news cycle, so we thought we'd see how recovery efforts are proceeding. It's time for the check-in. <laughs> Hurricane Maria was the worst natural disaster on record to hit Puerto Rico, a fact seemingly lost on our president, who almost immediately gave himself a perfect score on handling the crisis. Mr. President, if you stop between 1 and 10, how would you grade the White House response so far? I'd say it was a 10. I give ourselves a 10. We have provided so much, so fast. I would give a 10. I bet young Donald Trump wasn't one of those kids you let grade his own homework. <laughs> what would you give yourself on your volcano project? An A+. Plus. It's a great volcano, very lifelike. <laughs> really? Because all you did was dip a roll of toilet paper in kerosene and light it on fire. Now, those 10 out of 10 comments were made back in October. So what's that perfect score look like since then? Many Puerto Ricans spent their first Christmas since Hurricane Maria without power. More than three months after the storm, the island's electrical grid is operating just 65%, 65% of capacity. The ongoing crisis there is taking a terrible toll. The challenges that they're facing, particularly in the remote areas, um, rural areas, smaller towns, are much the same now as they were then. What we're seeing is really a lowering of the bar of, of what kinds of basic services are American citizens entitled to. Uh, you know, it's going to be 100 days without electricity for, you know, more than half of this, of this U.S. territory. If that's what Trump considers a 10, what would a 9 be? Accidentally sending an outbreak monkey? <laughs> okay, I'll be honest, we sent a monkey to help with the cleanup. It had a deadly virus. Long story short, 9 out of 10. <laughs> but don't worry, Puerto Rico, the president might not be on the case. But there's still Ben Carson. He's a brain surgeon, took a Hippocratic oath, and he's the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. Surely he had something a little more helpful to say about this crisis. Here he is being asked how long he thought HUD was going to be in Puerto Rico. Any idea how many years? Uh, somewhere between uh, one and a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Ben Carson might be the first brain surgeon in history to leave a sponge inside his own head. <laughs> so as you can see from your x-ray, everything is fine. Mine, on the other hand. <laughs> now, to give you a sense of the dysfunction in the recovery efforts, a contract for hundreds of millions of dollars was afforded to a small company in Whitefish, Montana, which also happens to be the hometown of Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke to help restore Puerto Rico's electrical grid. But almost immediately, there was scrutiny over the contract. First of all, the company only had two employees when Hurricane Maria hit. Two employees to handle a hurricane. That's like trying to solve Afghanistan with the Mayberry Police Department. <laughs> now, after much outcry and overbilling issues, the Whitefish contract has since been canceled, but Puerto Rico is still desperately in need of help. In November, for example, the White House asked Congress for $44 billion in hurricane aid funds designated for Texas and Florida, while most of Puerto Rico's needs would be addressed in a future request. Even worse, Trump and the GOP passed a tax plan that disproportionately harms Puerto Ricans by treating the American territory as a foreign entity and imposing unfair and cruel taxes on them, which could result in the loss of hundreds of thousands of jobs there. Congress has just passed this tax bill, which had this really um, sinister effect if I may, on Puerto Rico. It has a insidious, pernicious effect on manufacturing in Puerto Rico. It puts an excise tax, an import tax on products and services for Puerto Rico. A tax that's not there that's now. That's not there now. So well, that, that would cripple the Puerto Rican well, that, economy. Well, it's crippled already. It will obliterate it. This would be a much more devastating blow to our economy than Irma and Maria put together. The Republican tax bill is worse than two hurricanes put together. In fact, that's how meteorologists are going to start classifying them from now on. <laughs> Perhaps the only thing Trump has actually succeeded in doing when it comes to Puerto Rico is diverting attention away from the crisis. Over the weekend, the news cycle was dominated by Trump's alleged remarks that countries like Haiti and African nations are holes, which the governor of Puerto Rico also had to respond to. I think it is an S-H-I-T-T-Y comment. Uh, it is completely unacceptable. I get it. He's spelling it so that Trump wouldn't understand what he's saying. <laughs> Call the NSA. I need our very best code breaker on this. 
But Trump's comments are indicative of his lackluster response to Hurricane Maria. From the very beginning, he treated the American citizens of Puerto Rico much differently than those in Florida and Texas. And that's alarming, considering Puerto Rico was already facing a brutal recession before the hurricanes hit that left 44% of the population impoverished. And now, instead of actually helping the people of Puerto Rico, Republicans and Trump passed a law that would exacerbate the already dire economic situation there. And that can only be described as really What's the word I'm looking for? S-H-I-T-T-Y. Yeah, 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 that's the one. This has been The Check-In.